QuickBooks Desktop 2023. Income from bake feeds and income categories. Let's do it with Intuit's QuickBooks Desktop 2023. Support accounting instruction by clicking the link below, giving you a free month membership to all of the content on our website, broken out by category, further broken out by course, each course then organized in a logical, reasonable fashion, making it much more easy to find what you need than can be done on a YouTube page. We also include added resources such as Excel practice problems, PDF files, and more like QuickBooks backup files when applicable. So once again, click the link below for a free month membership to our website and all the content on it. Here we are in QuickBooks Desktop Bank Feed Practice File. We started up in a prior presentation going through the setup process we do every time. In the view drop down, we got the hide icon bar, open windows list checked off, open windows open on the left. Reports drop down, company and financial, looking at that P&L, profit and loss, changing the range from 010122 123122. Customize it. Fonts and numbers, changing the font up to 14 okay yes and okay reports drop down again company and financial this time the balance sheet standard report going to customize it first change the range 010122 to 123122 then fonts and numbers to change that to 14 okay yes and okay now let's open up the bank feeds go into the banking drop down bank feeds we have the bank feed center which would only be there if you had bank feeds turned on which we did in a prior presentation we're now going to be going over to the unrecognized uh, items we're looking at the deposit side of things so i'm going to filter my transactions to just see the deposits and then i'm going to then uh, organize them thusly and so now just a quick recap if i go back to the home page remember that we're thinking about the easiest system in general and then we'll take steps away from the easiest system focusing in on just the revenue cycle the ultimate end of the revenue cycle being cash coming into the company typically from customers the easiest kind of industry would be like gig work getting paid from platforms for example if you're like a YouTube platform or a teaching platform or stuff like that. And then we can wait till it clears the bank, use the deposit form to record the income, which is not natural for the accounting process because usually the forms to record income, even on a cash basis, is this create sales receipt. And on a accrual basis, it's the invoice. So as we use the bank feeds, we're gonna think about what kind of tweaks we need to do, given the fact that we're using a deposit form instead of these natural forms. And then later we'll talk about using these other forms and how the bank feeds can fit into that kind of system. So if I go into the profit and loss here, we're focusing in on these income accounts and we're gonna be able to see in the bank feed where the money came from. So then the question is, as I add them into the income accounts, what accounts do I wanna put in place? This is where we're gonna add more detail and this is where we're gonna deviate from the standard rule of having fewer income accounts and not naming the income accounts after a customer. And the reason we don't normally do that is because normally we can support what's on the income statement with these other reports, the sales by customer, breaking out income by customer and the sales by item, breaking out what we sold in more detail, items, service items and inventory items. We can't do that if we use the deposit form to record the sales, therefore we're more likely in this kind of business going to just name our income accounts like Amazon income or something like that. Okay, so that's what we're going to continue doing. Let's go back to the bank feeds. And let's just take a look at one of these like here's an amazon.com. Now Amazon's an, an unusual one here. So it's a good example of where you might have one platform that pays you for multiple different things. And you can see this on both the income side of things and the expense side of things. We have a similar kind of scenario where you're paying one vendor, for example, on the expense side of things for multiple different categories of expenses. Here we're paying, we're getting income from one uh, customer, but they might be paying us for multiple things. Amazon might, you might have video content 
on Amazon Prime or something that they're paying you for. You might be doing uh, affiliate marketing that you're getting paid for, various other things. There might be different locations that you would like to break out in some more detail on your account. So the, the ways we can break that out then is one, they have differences in the name sometimes. And then two, they have differences in the bank memo. And we can use that in the rules to allocate to different uh, different areas as as would be applicable. So let's let's first do let's just do this one. So I've got see these two are slightly different. So I'm gonna put this one, and I'm gonna add a payee. Now the next question is if I add a payee, do I just want to call it Amazon, or do I want to create multiple different customers? We can do either way because we're gonna have to. We might want to make a rule that distinguishes based on these items. I don't need to create a different customer. I could just say Amazon and then make a rule based on the data here and the data here to apply different transactions. However, maybe it would be easier for me when I go to my vendor center to be able to organize my, my not the vendor center, customer center. If I go to my customer center, maybe it would be easier for me to organize by customer and have different customers for the types of things that I'm being paid for. So I'm gonna close out the vendor center here. That's gonna confuse me. Close that out. So I'm gonna create actually different vendors here. So I'm gonna say this is gonna be amazon.com comma inc. And then I'll say uh, tab. I'm gonna quick add this. This is gonna be a customer. So make sure I should make sure to change that one. And then the account that it's gonna to go to, I'm gonna I'm gonna pretend this is this is Amazon Prime. So I'm gonna say Amazon. I'm just making this up Amazon Prime, like that they're paying me for video content on Amazon or Amazon Prime. I'm imagining that. So I'm going to say tab and we'll set that up. And then it has to be an income type of account. So I'm going to say it's an income account. Everything else looks good. I'm going to say save it and close it. And then before I add it, let's make a rule. Go into the add more details. I need a rule. There are rules here. This isn't crazy. This isn't anarchy. So we're going to go in here and say, let's make a new rule. And I'm going to have to distinguish it with this item. And if that wasn't distinguishing enough, then I'd have to also distinguish it from the memo information. So I'm going to name the, the rule Amazon and I have to name it something that's also distinguishing. So I'm going to say income. And then we could imagine all or or uh, any I'm going to keep it at all the description here I'm not going to say it has to match but contains and in this case if I just go to amazon.com inc that's enough to distinguish but if it were not I could add another line and possibly use the memo line which would then possibly have something in the memo that would be a distinguishing factor and I could say hey if it meets both of those conditions then you're gonna then you're gonna want to use this rule as opposed to possibly another rule. You also could imagine that if the income is always the same for whatever reason, you can use a amount condition and and use that one. But in this case, I'm gonna close this back out and say let's save that, and that looks good. Save it and close it. So now that one has been pulled over here, and then on the recognized transactions on the deposit side of things. We should have that. Here's the deposit side of things. These these Amazon items pulled over. Not all of them though, because we still have some other Amazon items. Let's go to the deposits this way. And then Amazon. There's still a couple other ones that have some different descriptions that didn't pull over with the rules. So if I go to the balance sheet then, balance sheet, checking account. Now I might want to start filtering my checking account so that I could filter by deposits. So this is a nice tool, customizing. I can then go into the filters and filter by type, which is down here by type, transaction type. I'm gonna just look for the deposits and that'll make it a little bit easier, hopefully. And so there's that Amazon item I put in, double clicking on it, it's a deposit form. We can see there, double clicking on it. There's the deposit form and there it is closing this out closing this out if i go to my customer center and the open windows now i've got my customer set up note you could add these items by just assigning an account without a customer but you don't want to do that because you want to have the added detail of the customer here note also that if i go into the profit and loss 
that I cannot sort this data with my sub ledgers. If I go to the reports drop down sales and I look at my sales by uh, by customer detail, for example, from 010122 to 123122, notice it only has that one invoice we made before. It doesn't have, I can't sort by customer here because I used a deposit form uh, and, and, and that's not the form typically used. So, so that's QuickBooks doesn't, that's why we have to add like the customer names in like the income accounts, which we normally wouldn't do, right? So, and then I can go to the reports drop down again. I can go, let's look at the sales by item summary. Uh, and so once again, 010122, 1231222, this is the items that we would sell. We didn't add any items because we just entered it with a, a deposit form. So we can't have that supporting information this way either. That's why we're more likely to add the names directly into the income statement income accounts. All right, let's do another one. Let, let's say we go back to the bank feeds and let's say that we're going to do a Google one. So here's Google. Let's imagine that that we're we're doing uh, YouTube, right? A YouTube thing. So again, and you might have multiple Googles because here's another area where we've got Google YouTube versus Google AdSense. So if those were different, distinguishing in some way, then maybe you distinguish those out. I'm just going to call it. Let's do Google YouTube. Once again, I'm going to create a different customer if I'm gonna create a different account as well, which you don't need to do because you could do it with just a rule, but it might make it easier to sort in your customer center, the customers that are distinguishing what you what you use, what, you, what the income source was. So I'm gonna say, boom, let's set that up. Quick add it. It's gonna be a customer, not a vendor. An account, I'm just gonna call it YouTube income, right? And that, which is totally a generic kind of uh, income. I'm gonna say tab and set it up and it's going to be an income account income account right there and save it let's make a rule for it hitting the items for the more detail i'm going to make a rule there are rules here here we go let's just make a rule this is going to be google youtube rule and then so so i'm going to make the description i don't need it to match but just contain but i want to make sure that it contains that component which is distinguishing from another item if it if it if it needed another distinguishing factor i might use the memo but we're good here so we don't need to add another line it's going to go to youtube income i'm going to say okay save it to the registrar to have him uploaded here and if i go to the recognized stuff and sort by the deposits now we've got Google income. Let's take, take a look at the balance sheet, double clicking on the checking account, customizing it filters. Let's look at the transaction type and the deposits and okay. So now we should have one for Google. There it is. And closing this back out, closing this back out. The other side's going to the income statement, profit and loss. Now also note that some of these might be similar. You might say, well, maybe Amazon and Google are like content income. So you might create like a parent account possibly and have these subsidiary accounts to the parent account. So you can collapse them and expand them with something like an arrow here. So we might experiment a little bit with some stuff like that later. So let's do another one here. Let's go back to the, to the bank feeds. Let's go back to unrecognized sort by the deposits. And then let's try another one with that Amazon. Let's pretend that we had another Amazon.com and this California, let's pretend this was book sales right here. So we've got a book that we sold. It's making massive revenue. So let's say that this one is gonna be, uh, Am and I'll make a, so again, I could use the same customer and that would be fine because then I can still distinguish making a different rule to the same customer or I can make another customer. So I'm going to make another customer, amazon.com, but then dot California tab, quick add customer, not a, and then the account, I'm just going to call this Amazon book sales and then set that up as an income account. Let's just say income. Okay. Let's make a rule to it, even though I don't think we have any other ones on this one, but just in case 
we sell any more of these books? I'm just making books up, by the way. So that looks good. Let's set up a rule. And then we're going to say this is going to be Amazon.com.California. And we've got the distinguishing factor here. I'm going to say description. Let's say it just contains. I don't need this last payment bit. Just as long as it's got that dot California, it should be distinguishing from the other rule. So it should be good. So we'll say save it and close it. Save and move on over to the register. So then it's been added here. I don't think there's any other ones that pulled over to recognize because this was the only one. If I go to the balance sheet, sort it or double check on the checking account, customizing, filtering, and then checking it out by transaction type and saying we want to see just the deposits boom and so there's the amazon here's the two amazons that one and that one and then this one is prime this one was the book sales we have to the split account right there and then if i close that back out on the income statement now we've got another category for amazon book sales which you, you can see this is getting quite a lot of income accounts which is unusual that you wouldn't normally do that unless you're you have this kind of gig work business because you might just call this you know all kinds of service income or content income and then break it out with the sub ledger accounts normally breaking out by customer and item but gig work kind of thing we're depending on the deposits therefore we don't have the sub ledgers so we might add more of the actual customers in the income accounts so let's do another one let's go back to the bank feeds and go okay let's try deposits again deposits and let's do audible so audible here i'm gonna say so this is like audiobooks so i could say audible tab quick add customer and then we could say okay the, I, now like i say we normally we would make an account maybe called audiobooks and then the audible audible being one of the people that pay us the audio books if we had multiple of them but since we can't break out the detail i'm going to call it audible audible directly or audible and then i might say audiobook income or just also say audible income audible income tab and then we'll say set it up and it's going to be an income account income and save it and then we'll go to the drop down and add more details so we can do a a uh, rule and let's just call it an audible rule an audible rule can you hear it it's an audible rule so there we're going to say it's going to be a description it's going to contain all i need is audible i don't really need the edi so that should do it right there let's go ahead and save it and save to the register pulls it over here and the other ones should pull over to the recognized area if i sort by deposit i should just add some of these there's the audible ones so if i go to the balance sheet double click on the checking account we can then sort the checking account filtering by transaction by transaction where's the transaction there boom deposit bam and so now we should have one for audible which is right there closing it back out and then go into the profit and loss the other side is in the audible income all right let's go back on over and say let's go to the bank feeds again and this time i'm going to go back to the unrecognized i'm going to sort by deposit and then let's pick up an interest income so interest income let's say that this came from the bank i'm just going to make a generic bank tab quick add which you could put as a custom it's probably more better other because you might have things going in and out related to the bank so we're going to say okay let's make it a customer and then there's nothing in the memo because it's just an interest payment so okay and then the account it's going to go to would be interest uh income because this is an increase for the income now if you had your chart of accounts set up from uh, when you made up the, the file, you might have an interest income account. We don't, so I'm going to add it. I'm gonna, just going to call it in, interest income tab, set it up. Now, this one you could put in as an income, a normal income account, 
But because income from interest is not my primary income, I would typically put it down here in other income so it's gonna show up on the bottom of the income statement because it's not part of our primary income. Save it and close it. Let's add the rule to it. Add some more details, a rule. A lot of rules here. Yeah, this is, if you're under my roof, bank fees, there's gonna be a lot of rules around here. <laughs> Interest payment. So we're gonna say this is gonna be money in. Uh, this is gonna be all description match. It just, it's gonna contain, all I need is really interest. Maybe a payment, yeah, let's, all we need is interest, I think. And then it's gonna be a bank that looks good. Let's save it and then save to the register. So that should pull over here and in the recognized area sorting by the deposit, we then have the interest items. There they are here. So let's go back on over to the banking. I won't double click. I won't check that one again because the banking is fairly straightforward. We've got the increases there. I'm fairly confident of. On the income statement, we didn't put it in the income side up top, but made other income down here in the same area. We put the unrealized gains and losses, that being the difference, so that now we've got income from ordinary operations and then the other kind of random stuff that isn't part of our normal operations to get to the bottom line. Okay, so that's going to be the general idea of it. So we've got a lot more kind of income accounts than we might have if we weren't in a gig work kind of situation. We named them after like who actually paid us, which is kind of unusual, but something you often do uh, if, if you're going to try to record things directly from the bank feeds. Uh, and that's going to be the, the general idea. So we got later, we're going to add, we're going to have to add all these rules stuff in here. So we'll do that at some future point for now. Just remember, it's useful to look at the trial balance to get an idea of where we stand from 010122 to 123122. Let's customize it, fonts and numbers, and bring it up to 16. 16, okay, yes, and okay. So note, if you can just imagine this being assets or know where the cuts are, liabilities, equity, income, which are all these income accounts now, and then the uh, expenses, then you can, and then other income and expenses, you can then look at, at this report as a nice report to check as you're entering or adding the bank feeds to, to drill down on to the transaction detail and the source documents to get a good understanding of what's happening.